Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Xin Kui Wei from Research Center Yiddish. Firstly, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this chance of sharing the results here. So today, I'm going to give you a talk about self you heteronal layers and the real space topological ferroelectricity discovered in nickel phosphide. Nowadays, clean and renewable energies are highly demanded because of the limited reserves of fossil fuels. Water splitting through electrolysis provides us an effective solution to produce hydrogen energy. Nevertheless, the noble metals are also limited in reserve. To realize sustainable energy production, substitution of noble metals by cheap and efficient catalysts are highly demanded, and the transition metal phosphide is one of the candidates for this purpose. It has been reported that nickel 5 p 4 and the nickel 2 p one are highly efficient catalysts in hydrogen production. Specifically, the 5 or phase has been reported to possess platinum, platinum level activity in sulfuric acid. Nevertheless, more results show that its activity is comparable to that of a 2 1 phase. So this Rose our great curiosity to explore its surface structure. The DFT calculations on these two phases show that their their the one surfaces are highly efficient in hydrogen evolution. And here we see that their surfaces can be reconstructed in a very complex way. To explore their structure and property relationship, we therefore carry out a atomic scale TM study on the nickel phosphide system. So here. In this talk, I will show you two findings. One is core shell structure feature identified in the 5 4 phase of the nanosheets. And the other one is discovery of topological ferroelectricity in the nickel 2 p1 system. Regarding the nickel 5 p4 nanosheets, our electron diffraction experiments reveal that they have preferential zero one orientation. And this is the higher solution TM image recorded along the one direction. From the image with filtered intensity, we clearly see the atomic terraces, which evidence the surface reconstruction. And this is further evidenced by the intensity profiles of uh, atoms within the blue hexagon. Interestingly, our electron beam bombardment experiments reveal presence of a thin layer of 2-1 phase on top of the 5-4 phase. So this is consistent with our nickel-rich EX result and the structure model shown on the right-hand side. For simplicity, we've, we carry out further structure study using hard stem. Through in the simulations, we found that the ideal 5 4 phase cannot interpret our experimental results. So this can be found by, comparison, by comparing these two images. Instead, only one proper weaknesses are considered at the nickel sites. The surface reconstruction can be re reproduced. So here we show comparison of the simulated image with the experimental one, where a thin layer of nickel PX, nickel 2P1 nanolayers are overlapped on the 5 4 phase, where the thickness is about 2 nanometers. So from this specific atom size, we can clearly see the reconstruction is well reproduced, although our search solution is not unique. Our measurement shows that the heteronal layers leads to passivation of the 5 4 phase. The valence state of nickel and phosphorus in the bulk form arose our curiosity because of their seemingly ambiguous solution according to the electroneutral law. Apart from this, the coexistence of metallicity with structural asymmetry also arose our curiosity. Since in ferroelectric insulators, these two physical quantities conflict with each other. So here, 
To find out more details, we focus our attention on the Nikol2P1 phase. The phase purity is identified by SRD, EDX, and the heart of stem about the nanoparticles. Our previous study on ferroelectric PCT revealed that to charge the means with an equal polarization will lead to unstable structures at the domain wall center, which is manifest by the presence of the in-plane polarization component. So the same thing should apply to the nickel phosphide system, which have polar pyramids and a tetrahedral. On this basis, we construct a series of symmetry equations about polarity, where the atomic size of a nickel 1, nickel 2, and their valence states are taken as variables. So associated with the electroneutral law, we find the analytic solutions. So we see the one state of nickel and the phosphorus have intimate relationship, and also the polyhedral polarity linearly coupled with the valence state of nickel and phosphorus. For two experimental data sets about the crystal structure of nickel 2 P1, we found the polarity configuration may change from center divergent to center conver convergent, and uh, both of which have a one in number of one. To verify the analytic solutions, we measure the valence state of nickel using EUS. Referring to the nickel standard, our measurement using white line intense methods review that nickel has an average valence state of 0.5. So regarding nickel 1 and nickel 2, which locate at the center of the tetrahedral and the pyramids, the valence state is 0.4 and 0.6 at the atomic resolution. By combining the, uh, by exploring the bonding energy and the valence state relationship in a series of uh, phosphorus con containing compounds, we find out the valence state of a phosphorus in the compound is about minus one through use study. Specifically, if Considering all possible 3D 4S electron occupancy configurations and uh, the chart relation about phosphorus, each of the elements has an effective wealth range, which are shown here. And uh, these results will agree with solution from our symmetry equations. So regarding the topological polar transition, our DFD calculations reveal that an in-plane compressor string may lead to this transition. Meanwhile, we found presence of a tunable bilayer double well potential while applying the compressor string. To further verify the topological polarization, the Rajba effect was examined by considering the spin optical interaction. Due to absence of a structure invariant symmetry, spin degeneracy is lifted in our calculation, and uh, we found that the spin polarization coupled with the polyhedral polarity, which is manifested by, state by edge state at minus 0.8 EV near the zone boundary region. Furthermore, our DFT calculations also, also show this uh, nickel 2p1 phase show metallic state before and after the compression. So now in this system, we see that many physical quantities couple with each other. The switchable pol polyhedral polarity, topological feature, wind state, spin polarization, and so on. To describe this intimate coupling between so many parameters, we therefore coin a new term, that is topological ferroelectric metal, which should be a new, which should represent a new class of materials. This finding points out that we may explore new interactions between topological ferroelectricity with ferromagnetism and the superconductivity 
in asymmetric compounds, and also it presents a spin level understanding to the electrochemical reactions in energy conversion materials. So with this, I, look, I would like to make a summary. In our study on nickel 5P4, we found presence of self epitaxial heteronal layers, which leads to passivated catalytic activity. In the nickel 2P1 system, we establish a new material system, which is coined as topological ferroelectric metal. So this finding expands the research scope of ferroelectric physics to topological to topology. Meanwhile, it presents a new insight to understand the catalytic reactions in energy conversion materials. So at the end, I would like to thank my colleagues and uh, also funding from the EU about our QuickCap project. Thank you for your attention.